Reimagining Success, episode 222. You're listening to the Reimagining Success podcast, where we help you design a business and a life that allows you freedom from the nine to five. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, ex-corporate good girl, now a business mentor and coach, author, mum of two, and I'm here to help you create more freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment. Now let's get started with redefining success outside of the nine to five. Hello there and welcome back to what will hopefully be an interesting episode for you. It's something that popped into my mind spontaneously and I think it was an important insight that really taps into the bigger topic of redefining success and everything we talk about on this podcast. So I'm actually recording this just before Christmas. To set the scene for you, I've just published my book, Outside the 9 to 5. If you've been listening to the podcast, you will have followed along with the mini series this month. So I published the paperback. I've now, by now, when you listen to this, uh, launched the Kindle. And this is something that, to be honest, I've wanted to do for years because I published my book, Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5, back in 2018. And this book, Outside the 9 to 5, has kind of been there, certainly in my head, in my mind, for many years. Naively, I think I had the ambition to publish a book every year back in the day, but perhaps I can in part at least blame having children, moving house, pandemics and all sorts of other things happening. And and of course, everything else that is a priority in business and in life. Um, But this really is the consolidation of, if not everything, then the most important things that I've learned in my own experience since I quit my job, which now is, you know, actually coming up to 10 years ago. So 2023, when you're listening to this, I quit my job in 2013. And the coaching business has been since sort of 2015, 2016. So even that has been there for quite some time. And I've organically developed what I now call what you now know as the five pillars. So I'm sharing all this preamble to set the scene again. Um, If you, again, have been listening, perhaps you, you got my email saying that I hadn't been very well in December. In fact, I'm going to pause the recording now so I can cough very poignantly. There you go, I'm back. (laughs) So I've not been very well the last few weeks and it's really nothing serious. I don't mean to, um, you know, to feel sorry for myself. So apologies for even mentioning it. But just to, of course, say that I had to prioritise myself. I just didn't have the energy, the voice, the visual appearance um, and so on that I would have needed to do a big launch shebang. So I got lots of ideas from people as to what I could do and I could do, I could gamify it and I can do this live and all these things and I want to do a daily live and I just very sensibly chose not to do that. I was toying with doing a pre-order of the paper book for January, but um, Amazon doesn't do pre-orders for paperback and I really wanted to launch the paperback first. I then thought, well, okay, I could just wait to launch it until January, but for my personal satisfaction, I was very set, perhaps stubbornly so, on getting the book out in 2022. I really started it at the beginning of the year and I wanted to finish it. I had finished it, it was all ready to go. And so I finally landed on doing what I call a soft launch. So I pushed it live, I put it live for $5.99 in UK currency, so sort of half price it's going to, in fact, now it will have gone up to $9.99. I then communicated it very much behind the scenes. So, of course, contacting my waiting list of super fans who very uh, kindly signed up to that waiting list some time ago, to my own email community, to my Facebook group, to to friends and family and so on. By now, of course, I will have done a bit more of a shebang, as I keep calling it. Uh, So that's what I landed on. Now, all of that preamble to set the scene for, I've always wanted to be a writer. I finally published this book, you know, let's say three, four years after I kind of had the idea I wanted to publish it. It took me a year to write it. It's a huge achievement, let's put it out there, to write a book. It's whatever, 250 pages worth of original writing from me. It's years worth of wisdom, if I can be so bold, consolidated into this book. It's been a complete labour of love. It is massive and I should be you know, on cloud nine, I should be celebrating champagne all around parties. In fact, of course, again, I should have using the word should a launch party and so on. And I hope I will have done that by the time you listen to this. However, all this to say that I'm feeling, and I'm being a bit vulnerable and sharing this, I'm feeling a little bit deflated. 
because you work towards this goal for so long and it's so meaningful to you and it's such a big achievement and everyone says, wow, you're writing a book, that's so great and, you know, let us know when it's out and so on. And then what happens? Well, of course, inevitably there are some issues. There was a mistake in one of the graphics that I'd missed and that was sort of a panicky turnaround with my poor graphic designer who was just about to go on holiday but very kindly managed to squeeze me in. There are always delays on Amazon, as as those of you who have published books will know. It can take, you know, they say up to, I think they say up to a week or something, but certainly 24, 48, 72 hours, whatever it is they say generally, to propagate the changes. Um, So if I had done a massive launch, by the way, it would not have been uh, synchronized with the launch because it took several days to get that right. In fact, even now as I speak, uh, some of my clients who are wanting to buy it are saying, oh, it says out of stock, which is very odd because it's print on demand, so it really shouldn't be out of stock ever. Um, So, you know, the process has been a little bit stop and start. I'm not doing a big activity for it. I'm not even really doing sort of a personal celebration of it because I'm still not so well and it's Christmas and there's other stuff going on. And I suppose there's a bit of a sort of, I don't want to do a song and dance about it with my friends and so on because it feels a bit arrogant, I suppose. Again, being a bit vulnerable here, sharing that that feeling. So I'm feeling the anti-climax and I joke about it, but it's, it's really quite poignant. And I think it's an important thing to recognize that you might be wishing of, dreaming of, longing for this thing, maybe you're even working towards it, but it, whether you're working towards it or not, it's so important to ask yourself, well, hang on, why is this so important to you? You know, how does it actually serve you personally, professionally? How are you going to feel when you finish it? How does this then change your life essentially for the better? And, you know, is it something you actually want to dedicate that time to? Now, by the way, I should say, I'm not regretting this in any way. I'm so proud of myself. It's 100% the right thing for me as a as a want-to-be writer. And I'd, I'd like to say I can call myself an author now. I actually have several books on my Amazon platform, but certainly these two books I'm very proud of, Leaving the Corporate 9 to 5 and Outside of the 9 to 5. And I plan to write more as well. So that's a huge achievement for me. And yet, you know, you just don't quite get the... I don't know what you expect, I suppose. It's a bit like actually hitting your goal weight. So, you know, for years, I haven't been back to, you know, whatever my weight was in my 20s. I guess most of us aren't. (laughs) I had babies and I had sort of let my weight creep up. I was eating quite a lot and, you know, quite healthily, but just too much and not really consistently exercising or doing exercise. It wasn't making much difference. In the last couple of years, I've worked with a nutritionist and personal trainer. I finally hit actually three times lower, not three times lower, but three times I I lowered my weight target because I kept hitting it. And then say what? Does anyone else care? Yes, a few people will say you look slim, you look good or whatever, which is to some extent a bit insulting as well, of course, because there's an implication that you didn't before. I feel great energy wise and I'm glad I've done it, but it's not like there's a massive party and you suddenly, your life changes for the better. Yes, clothes fit a bit better, you feel a bit more confident, but you know, there's still flabby bits, there's still, uh, you know, you still eat probably too much over Christmas or whatever, and then you need to again, uh, you know, tighten the belt, whatever. So so it's interesting that that whatever that target, writing a book, um, quitting my job, in fact, it wasn't exactly a target, but I felt amazing. I came back from my sabbatical and everyone said, oh my gosh, you must be so sad to be back. And I said, nope, because I've quit my job. And it felt amazing. But of course, then once you've left the office, everyone else is is continuing to work and then their jobs and in their office and earning money. And you're kind of like, um, what do I do now? So I had some amazing few weeks and months traveling and so on. But ultimately, the sort of drudgery of the mundane day to day comes back. And then you you are left with, right, I've just given up my income. And, and what do I do now? So I wanted to share sort of three insights, I guess, based on this anticlimax of achieving your goals. Now, the first one is, you have to be careful when you choose a goal you're working towards. So of course, this is the whole and we've talked about this now in conjunction with the new year and so on. Questioning you know, if you're kind of just arbitrarily or very quickly setting yourself New Year's resolutions, whatever goals, because you've always had them every year, you just kind of, yeah, yeah, this is my goal. This year is going to be the one or whatever it is. Try to take some time, take a step back. Is that really a goal? The fact that you haven't been, you know, working towards it, let alone achieving it the last few years probably tells you something, either that something else is more important that you don't actually want it or, you know, you don't know how to do it or it's not a priority right now. You know, there are some likely reasons why you haven't moved towards that, right? So really take the time to understand if that is your goal and not something that you just feel you should do or that you kind of have 
in some way imagined is going to get you where you want to be. You know, we I wrote an article last year, actually, that was, you know, when it's something about when it's not the job that's the issue. Because I talk, of course, about escaping the nine to five. And there are a lot of things that are wrong with the so-called nine to five and that whole rigid structure and the corporate and so on. And the amazing news is that some of those things are beginning to creakily kind of evolve. And certainly some businesses are much better at embracing flexibility and so on. But we also shouldn't demonize that, right? And quitting that job isn't going to miraculously solve all your problems because you still have to work hard in your business. You need to know what you're doing, business model, all these things that in fact the book talks about, of course. But also if you bring with you the same mindset, the same overachiever, busy is important, you know, the sort of status symbol of being stressed and exhausted all the time, those same working habits then you'll be back exactly where you were, possibly earning less money or even more stress because now you've got your own business. So it's so important when you're choosing a goal that you're choosing the right goal. Now, assuming you have a goal that, yes, you think is going to be meaningful or, you know, yeah, that is, you know, yes, I want to publish a book. Yes, I want to start a business. Yes, I want to grow to this income, whatever. Again, double click on that. The second thing is make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. So even if you're like, yeah, yeah, this is 100% what I want to do, you know, in fact, I'm, I've been listening to um, Brene Brown's, oh gosh, I'm not sure which one it is now. Um, I think the Vulnerability series on Audible. I've read so many of her books, so apologies. Hey, The Power of Vulnerability. She talks about working towards that promotion and be excited about how you're going to tell people, oh yes, well, yeah, I'm, I'm VP now. And, uh, you know, celebrating that and obviously probably more income and that's going to be exciting. You've got that bigger desk or office or whatever. And then she very uh, cynically fast forwards to divorce and not seeing your kids and, and stress and so on, right? The reality of that promotion, once you've got it, in fact, I have... I have people, of course I know, but someone in particular I'm thinking who's done incredibly well, finally got the promotion they were working towards and that just brings more stress and the next level of promotion that you're working towards, right? So something that society sees as an incredible achievement, something you should absolutely be striving for and you even think, yep, yeah, once I've got that, then I can relax. No, 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 I'm afraid not because you'll just be working towards the next thing. So make sure once you've chosen the goal that you're doing it for the right reasons, not for the external accolades, not just because, yeah, it's the next step that it, you should be following on the ladder or whatever, um, you know, that other people say, oh my gosh, that's amazing, what an incredible opportunity. Really find that intrinsic motivation. You need to feel it's the right thing for you. So to be honest, coming back to my book, which is of course what triggered this, I wouldn't have managed to write that book if I hadn't been intrinsically motivated. Because as we showed throughout the year, I've been blocking time on Thursdays initially to create my course, The Outsiders Business Academy, and then eventually turning that into really a book and editing that and, and so on. That's a huge commitment, one out of three days a week, basically, that I have to work, you know, showing up, taking myself off to cafes. Nobody else cares if I do it. I mean, a couple of clients very kindly asked about it, but really it's for me, right? And the reason why I did it, I mean, many reasons. A, I've always wanted to be a writer. I love to write. B, I had this idea for the book, which is, okay, now you've had, you know, you've been inspired to quit your job. How do you actually go about it, right? There was that missing next step after leaving the corporate nine to five. C, it has a really specific role in my ecosystem. So it's feeding into my business academy course. It's really sort of the book accompaniment, uh, companion, whatever you want to call it, to the academy. It's, you know, it's a business card. It's, um, it's, it's really the, I don't want to say pinnacle. That's a bit, a bit of an over-exaggeration. Summary is a bit of an under-exaggeration. <laughs> Representation, let's say, of what I've learned, what I've developed, my thinking. I've got, I think, 31 figures in there, thanks to um, my amazing graphic designer who's um, fancified those for me. But all my thinking, my little models. So, of course, my five pillars, my five L's that I've been sharing, but also three I's, three P's, and all sorts of things that you'll learn about if you do read the book. But, you know, it's there is a specific reason why I've written this. For my own bigger identity as a writer because I had the idea, because I have the knowledge and experience, because my clients and prospects need it, because it is it fits into a specific step in the purchasing funnel, if you want to call it that. You know, it's kind of a point of market entry that you can buy right now for £10, I guess, or Kindle is cheaper. Um, and either you just buy that and you're fine, or that then triggers you to take the next step, which is join the course or work with me as, as your coach, you know, ongoing, join the accelerator, et cetera, et cetera. So, all that to say that I'm intrinsically motivated. I was intrinsically motivated because I wanted to write in general. I wanted to write this book and this book has a specific role to play. So I didn't 
try in the end to hack the kind of Amazon algorithm. There's all sorts of things. You can get people to to write your reviews for you on the first day, which I think is a bit disingenuous. You know, have a launch team send your draft book to them in PDF before, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't do that. Maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I'm uh, authentic and ethical. I don't know. But I didn't try to do that. I'm rather looking at it as an ongoing a hard slog is a bit of a negative way, but certainly a slow burn, let's call it, and something that will serve my prospects and clients in the long term. So number one, be careful when you choose a goal. Number two, really understand why you're doing it and do it for the intrinsic motivation, not for the external accolades. And number three, and I'm speaking to myself as much as to you here as ever, find ways to acknowledge and celebrate your achievements. Because look, I'm so grateful to everyone who said congratulations, fire emojis, clap, clap, clap. That's incredible. I could never do that, etc. I am so, so grateful. And I'm not meaning to diminish those things. But you know, a few sort of claps on Instagram or people telling you, well done, Anna, is, is unfortunately not quite the, I don't know what we expect if we expect a whole auditorium of applause. And um, there was a a discussion going on, on on Twitter and Instagram a few weeks ago where some poor author had been at one of these book signing things and pretty much nobody had turned up. And I've seen those before. I mean, I saw someone outside a bookshop and people just walking past and I felt so bad for him, especially sort of as an author myself. Um, but all these famous authors were sharing that that was the same thing that happened to them many times in the past, right? People come up to you and ask you for coffee or they think that you're someone else, you know. So I think we can't rely on that external applause and celebration and all those accolades and so on. That's the whole point about success. And it's what we talk about. And it's what all my guests on the podcast talk about when we talk about redefining success. So you need to find ways to acknowledge yourself, celebrate your achievements, whether it's, you know, the go-to might be to buy something, get yourself a massage or something, you know, by all means, in this case, you know, have some kind of launch event, I suppose, for me to really acknowledge it. But Or maybe it's some equipment that you buy for your business, for example. Find a way to to do that. And it doesn't have to be buying something. If you're more creative than I am, that's even better. You know, take some time off or, or whatever it is for you. That is so important. Don't wait for, it's great if you get it, but don't wait for... The applause, the um, adulation from your fans and so on, because it might not come. And even if it does, it might feel, in fact, probably will feel never enough, Right. So there you go, a bit of a bit of a sad episode in a way. It's the anti-climax of getting everything you ever wished for. <laughs> but it's just the reality that, you know, you work towards something, it's meaningful, but then what? Well, you know, you're going to climb the next mountain. I'm going to write another book. I'm going to focus on another aspect of my business. That's just life. And that's, it gives you meaning. Having these goals, meaningful goals, gives you meaning as you walk towards them, work towards them, walk towards them, run towards them. Um, So that's really important. It's not to say you shouldn't have goals, but just make sure that, you know, you have those goals, the right goals for the right reasons. And then you celebrate, acknowledge, hooray, before you then rush on to the next thing, right, to choose the next right goal. So I'd love to hear your insights on this one. I think it's an important one. I'd like to know, I'd like to think I'm not alone in this. So do reassure me. So do um, message me on on social or um, you can email me at podcast at onestepoutside.com as well. But thank you for listening and I'll see you back here next week. Bye for now. Are you at that point where you're asking yourself, is this really what I want to be doing for the rest of my life? And the answer is a resounding no, but you're not yet sure what you want to do instead. I get it. I was in your shoes back in 2013 when I took a good hard look at myself and my CV. And up until then, I'd followed the conventional path. Good school, good university, good job. I was also single while more and more friends around me were settling down with partners and babies. Now, fast forward to today and I've built a coaching and consulting business. I've published two books with more on the way. I've launched a podcast. But more than that, I've been able to travel the world. I've made more time for friends and family. And I've designed and shaped a location and business and a lifestyle that's 100% tailored to my own personal definition of success. Oh, and I've also moved countries, I've fallen in love, and I've had two beautiful little children. So if you want to redefine what success looks like for you, then get in touch to book a call, onestepoutside.com forward slash call, onestepoutside.com forward slash call, and I'd like to help you do just that.